Hi guys, as you can see, we have a special guest here today, someone we haven't seen in person in a long time, uh, Fang Bian from Hi Fi Man. He's the founder of Hi Fi Man. Fang, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Jude. It's been th well, almost three years yeah. since I've seen you. Can Jam New York, 2020 was the last time I saw you. Yeah. And uh, we've kept in touch a little bit, but probably not enough. Um, you've been in the U.S. for how long? Uh, I arrived a couple weeks. Yeah. And so he decided to stop by Head HQ to say hello. Uh, we had a lot of catching up to do. Uh, listen to some products that aren't out yet. Yeah. Um, we can't talk about that yet, but there are some products that we can talk about. But before we get to those, what have you been up to? Three years, we haven't seen Fang Bian from Hi Fi Man. What's been going on? Oh, yeah, we, um, uh, we're doing good. Uh, we, um, in three years, we try uh, to catch up the others, uh, manufacture a lot of headphones. At the same time, we did a lot of research. Uh, we got a whole bunch of new results. So uh, that's why I'm here. I want to show off. <laughs> You're going to show off. Oh, good. I'm glad. So let's, let's, let's show off. Let's talk about some of the stuff that you have, the stuff on the table, yep. one of which was quietly launched late yep. last year, and two of which are being seen for the first time, mm -hmm. at least uh, as of the shooting of this video, um, here. Uh, so why don't we start with what you quietly launched mm -hmm. in Japan, if that's okay. This is the in-ear? Yeah, um, the, the, in, the in-ear called Svena. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's uh, Swedish. Uh, the English meaning is uh, Svan. It's a kind of bird. Okay, so it's, uh, how do you spell it? Um, S V A N A R. Okay, so yeah. oh, like Svanar. Svanar, yeah. Oh, it's like Swedish, you said. Yeah, Swedish. And it means swan? Swan. Swan. Okay, yeah. swan. The reason we, we name it is like a, 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 as, a, as a bird, you know, I, I just want to show that sure. you know, the industrial design is very interesting. Uh, it is. If you, if you look, uh, the, um, if looking from this side, it really looks like a swan. It does. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it in an abstract way, but it does look like a swan. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Svanar. Svanar. I like that. Yep. I like that. And this replaces the EF or the RE2000. 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 Yeah. It is, this replaced the, uh, the previous flagship model in the year. Okay. So you kind of quietly launched it. And right now it's mostly in Asia, correct? Yes. Okay. So you quietly launched it in Japan. Yeah. How did that happen? Oh, um, it's, um, it's like uh, some... Uh, okay, we... High Five Man Japan, we, we had an office in Tokyo. Okay. And then uh, the, uh, in later last year, we, 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 we shipped a prototype for evaluation, and there's a, a, a Japanese friend visit us said uh, he liked it very much. Uh, so he, uh, he said it's very high possibility. It might, uh, avail it might be uh, winning an award called it VG VGP Award, which okay. is one of the most important uh, audiophile awards in Japan. So... Um, so then we, okay, so we, we released in Japan first because it's promising, <laughs> right? So, uh, and uh, we're lucky that uh, we, we, we got that award indeed. <laughs> so it's a golden it, okay. award. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> so that's kind of why it launched. It was almost kind of, uh, yeah. uh, kind of forced, right? The timeline, you had to kind of get it out there. Yeah. And in Japan. So it released, I mean, it uh, replaces, you said, the RE2000. Yeah. And can we talk about some of the things? I really like the RE2000. Mm-hmm. Um, haven't listened to it in the last, you know, uh, like very recently. Mm -hmm. um, but since I've spent a lot of time with it, I know how mm -hmm. it sounds. To me, the Svanar yeah. is, I would say it's an improvement in the brief time I've had with it over the RE2000. What is different about it from the RE2000? Uh, yeah, so uh, the RE2000 is our previous flagship model. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of fans, a lot of people like it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, but people complain about uh, it's not uh, comfortable enough. Okay. So we actually redo the industrial design. Uh, it's a kind of semi-customer customer in, in the ear design. So okay. it's much more comfortable. You can stay in your ear forever. It will not fail down. Uh, and also, we use different materials on it. Uh, so here you can see that we have brass uh, in the front panel. Okay. Uh, and so the brass is, uh, is a kind of uh, uh, music instrument material. Uh, so it's very, uh, it benefits the acoustic a lot. Right. Uh, at the same time, the rear panel we use different material, which is aluminum. So aluminum is light. So which can guarantee that uh, the, this earphone, uh, they have the weight, uh, waiter uh, side uh, stay in your ear, and okay. it will not easy to fail down. So the the so that was actually intentional then, because you're saying the brass is heavier. Yes, and it's like a it, what is that a gold plated brass? 
Yeah, um, it's a it's a twenty four uh twenty four K gold plate. Okay. Yeah. So it's a gold plated brass, it's heavier than the aluminum and it's yeah. on the side closest to the ear. Yes. So essentially the weight distribution yeah. helps prevent it from falling out. Yes. I remember some years back, I think there was a, a Bowers and Wilkins earphone that did the same thing. I thought that was very clever uh, to do that, to weight it, to have the weight distribution that way. Sure. And it and I do find it comfortable, and I do find it more comfortable mm -hmm. than the RE2000. Sure. Um, uh, because of the shape, it's that it yeah. fits in my concha, very very nice, and and it went right in and sealed immediately. Uh -huh. So now, what about the 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 inside, the driver? Um, yeah. The the driver. Um, we um, we we actually work uh, uh, for like one year and a half um, um, over this design. So the driver we uh, is share the same uh, diaphragm technology called topology diaphragm, but we uh, have longer time to tone it uh, to get the uh, hundred percent potential uh, with a combination of aluminum and uh, brass and uh, structure and uh, also the combine with the driver. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you can hear not only is not only comfortable, uh, not only more comfortable. Also, the uh, uh, there's a lot more detail, a lot more bass. Uh, so overall, it's better. Yeah. I I actually like the imaging. Yeah. Um, it seems to image uh, wide. I, I I mean, my memory of the RE2000. Again, I I feel this is an improvement in that respect. Yep. It has the rich tonality. You know, the RE2000 can also be rich sounding. Yeah. But this seems maybe a little more detailed as well. Sure. So I think that is a very nice uh, replacement or successor uh, for the RE2000, and that's the Svanar. Thank you. So now it's may, now it's going to be, it's right now it's it's in Asia primarily. Japan was the first place, it's in Asia throughout, yep. all right? But now well, what about a worldwide release? Yeah, we're going to release it in Kenjam. So Kenjam, New York? New York, yeah. Okay, so hopefully we get this video out before Kenjam, New York, and that's when it's going to be kind of released to the world. Yes. Okay. Well, that's exciting. So that is the Hi-Fi Man Svanar. Yes. All right. And that'll be, is that the new flagship in here then? It's a new flagship of in the year. Okay. In the year. All right. Well, that's exciting. And thank you for bringing that along. I hope you leave that with me for a little bit so I can listen to it for sure. Sure. And uh, spend more time with it. I want to get to these two over here uh -huh. because these are products that, uh, at least as of the shooting of this video, it would be the first time they've been seen. Yes. And let's start with the headphone then. Sure. Um, and that is called the? Uh, it's called Audivina. Audivina. So yeah. the Hi-Fi Man Audivina. Yeah. The Audivina is actually two words. They combine together. Okay. Audi means hear, listen. And uh, Vina is a kind of uh, ancient music instrument. Okay. So basically, these headphones we design for the studio uh, monitor using. Okay. Um, the, the reason we designed this is that... Uh, I have a lot of friends, um, like David Chesky, the musicians, and some uh, uh, famous uh, recording engineer. Um, you know, they, they like hi-fi my headphones, but they complain about that most of the headphones is close back. So uh, they really want to have a pair of uh, close back headphones they can work in the, uh, in the studio. Oh, okay. So like a, yeah, because, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, um, so they so then uh, you know we we start from the um, uh, three or four years ago to working on the close back uh, headphones and then in the previous uh, couple of years we actually worked very hard in the in the um, R and D part to make it better sounding um, you know higher efficiency and overall better so uh, this is this is actually a result so right now we dare to release it uh, because. Uh, we finally got something can um, uh, as it's a close back design, but it's as open as a uh, as a planner, as a open back planner. Yeah, it does sound open. I have to compare it to some of the other uh, closed backs that uh, you know your competitors have that also sound pretty open. Yeah. But at least my preliminary impressions are very good with respect to it sounding like an open sounding. Yeah. Closed back. Yeah. So so yeah, you were mentioning that that. Uh, the stu your your studio friends your your uh, musician musician friends yeah. were wanting a closed back and almost everything you've ever released really has been open for yes. the most part so so that's good I've really enjoyed this headphone in early listening mm -hmm. can we talk about the driver for example so and just you know the enclosure what it's made of yeah. so well, let's look at the enclosure let's talk about the enclosure first actually because it's what we first see yeah um, it's uh, obviously it's wooden ear cup. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's a kind of special velo, uh, be unique in Asia. 
Okay. Uh, so the willow wood uh, is uh, this this very willow wood is looks very nice on the on the surface in the, the I agree. color, and uh, also a benefit of the acoustic. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and the shape we uh, the industrial design is not only for. Uh, like beautiful uh, looking is also benefit. Uh, so it also benefits the sound quality. Okay. Yeah. So we actually tweak this combination, the the, the, the special designed uh, uh, wooden ear cup along with our planner driver. Yeah. The planner driver is uh, is a, a diaphragm is very thin. It's a super nano diaphragm, and uh, the we also use stealth magnet in the inside. Uh, so it's a specially designed. Uh, planner headphone, planner driver for the close back headphones. Okay. Yeah. So it's unique to this, or it's built specifically for close back use. Uh, it is uh, so far. It's unique to this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So far. <laughs> so maybe we have more close backs coming. But so so it has the super nano diaphragm. Yes. The stealth magnets. Yes. But it dimensionally and just designed for close back specifically. Yes. yes. So okay. Yeah, I've enjoyed that one. That's another one I'm looking forward to spending more time with. Uh -huh. Where will it sit in the line? Is it kind of a flagship, a, the, the kind of the junior flagship? What is it? Um, it's like in the uh, it's a junior flagship in the uh, in the affordable price. Uh, so Headfire would not hit me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 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 at least I know you're not talking about the specific price yet. Maybe you're still working on it. Yeah. But but uh, as far as Headfires go, and uh, it, you'd say it's reasonably priced for a Headfire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. So I'm looking forward to finding out what you're going to price that at, and I'm really enjoying that so far. Good. So uh, now you were using it on a headphone stand here on the table that is not just a oh, headphone yeah. stand. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is uh, the other thing that we were going to talk about. This is this has not been seen yet either. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is something new. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And so um, go ahead. I'll let you introduce it because yeah. I've been enjoying that one. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's some headphones, some headphone amplifiers build it looks like a headphone stand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, I, uh, for many years, I want to make something because I think it's very convenient for using. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, if it's a, a desktop a headphone amplifier, it will take a lot of area on your table. So uh, if you can combine the headphone stand and uh, the amplifier together, then you save the you save the space, and it looks cool actually. It does. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we put this on. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> it does look cool. Yeah. I like the industrial design a lot, and you're right. I like how it saves space. But it's not just a headphone stand and an amplifier. The main part of it, really, in some ways, yeah, is the DAC. Yeah, so uh, if you, you check the name, it's EF600. So it's the Hi-Fi Man EF600. 600. So it's a, it's a model over EF400, okay. which is very successful. It's a ladder deck combined with a powerful amplifier. So the EF600 uh, used the second generation uh, ladder deck called Himalaya Pro. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we released the Himalaya deck um, uh, two years ago, about two years ago. And then uh, at that time, uh, you know, we we want to make the letter deck because the letter deck has almost disappeared uh, in the market. So, but a lot of people like it. Uh, I I'm also a very big letter letter deck fan. So it gave you uh, a very nice, uh, very musical listening experience. Um, so right now in the market, there are uh, most of the deck are Delta Sigma deck. Right. Yeah, they measure as well. Um, but for the listening experience. Uh, you know, still be a lot of hi-fi level or high-end level um, head fires okay. preferred later. Yeah, so I want to make something, uh, make, a letter, make a letter deck be, be available. Okay. So, yeah, so the EF600, the second generation letter deck, um, I'm very proud that uh, uh, it actually um, be more musical than the first generation. At the same time, it measures better. Okay. Uh, it measures better not only the the lowest uh, distortion. It's actually the from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The full listening range. Uh, the distortion is uh, much smaller comparing to the first generation. Okay. So I wanted just to give a little bit of background for someone who might be watching that isn't as familiar. Yeah. So this uh, uh, the the DAC inside the EF600 is a ladder DAC design. And that is, that really speaks to um, kind of the first DACs, right? Yes. Uh, that that were built. 
and we've since moved, and I'm not going to get into the details of this. I don't know that I'm even qualified to do so. Uh, we've since moved to a much more common deck today is the Delta Sigma type yes. deck. Yes. Now, that if you want a deck that measures better, then go ahead and get the Delta Sigma. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of aficionados, which yeah. you were referring to, within the community who prefer the sound mm -hmm. of ladder decks or R to R decks. And the Himalaya inside the EF600 is your second generation yes. of your ladder deck architecture. Yes. And that is a hi-fi man ladder deck architecture that's unique to you, correct? That's not like Bird Brown or anything like that. Okay. It is. Okay. Yeah. So that's really exciting. I have enjoyed the sound of this mm -hmm. in the brief time I've had it. Um, and uh, as far as the amplifier goes, so the DAC is an improvement. The amplifier is kind of similar in terms of its output to the EF400, correct? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, as powerful as EF400. Okay. And it can drive a lot of low-efficiency uh, headphones. Okay. Yeah. And But it does come with more output options. Yes. Okay. Can yeah. we talk about that? Let's talk about, like, sure. yeah. Yeah, so we have the headphone output, the balance, and uh, uh, a single-ended. Uh, but if you look at the rear panel, um, we have the uh, XLR and RCA mm -hmm. input and output. The output is the real line out. Mm -hmm. And the input um, is, you can use it as a, as a headphone amplifier only. Okay. You can bypass the deck. And you also can use the, uh, the, the, the coax input to tap the speed if. Okay. And uh, we also have uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, input. Is that what the uh, the antenna is for? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, just like the F400, we also have the USB input. Right. Yeah, the USB-A and USB-C. Okay. And both of those are for USB audio? Yes. Is it C and the A? Okay. Yes. Or B. Is that B? It's, it's A. It's, oh, is it's that A? I always get those it, confused. It is, it is, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I always oh. get them confused. But <laughs> but anyway, I think yeah. I know what you're talking about. So it has the, the, the older style USB connector yeah. and USB-C. Yeah. And they're both for USB audio the same. Yeah. But uh, I love the design. And again, oh, you know what I want to ask about this. These look like vents. Are those functional vents at the top? I really like the way those look. Yeah, the we have the vent in the in the top. We also have a whole bunch of this in the in the okay. bottom. Okay. Yeah, I noticed yeah. those. The the reason is that uh, it is um, uh, it is amplifier using a one hundred milliwatt one hundred watt uh, transformer inside. Okay. So we're gonna generate some heat. Right. So the uh, it's important to go to get these holes to to get the um, the cold the, the cold air uh, from the bottom and then the hot air will go up. Yeah, maybe it's our cold Michigan air, but it hasn't run too hot here for me when I've been using it. So that's good. So either the ventilation works or our air is cold, yeah. but uh, or both. But uh, I really enjoy the design, and it does save a lot of table space. the The desk I use at my house is very, very small, and so I don't really have a lot of room. And so that is a very nice thing to have: the deck, the amp, and then also yeah. the stand. Because I'm always looking for somewhere to put my headphones. Sure. So that's also great. Now when. Is that going to be launched? Is that going to be launched also at CanJam New York? Yeah, we're going to launch on the CanJam New York, and so uh, yeah, hopefully in the in the next couple of weeks. Well, if we can get this video out before CanJam New York, which I hope we can, then that'll be your first opportunity to listen, uh, at least in the United States, certainly to the Svanar. Yes. Um, also to the Autovina. Yes. And the EF six hundred. Um, yeah, we just kind of, I'm, I, we, we decided to shoot this video on a whim. I'm just so happy to have him here. He brought the products. I said, let's just shoot a quick video to show some of the products that you might not have seen yet. Um, and so I'm very thankful. But uh, yeah, it's been great, Fong, having you here. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we still have another day, so we're going to hang out, yeah. catch up. Um, we're doing a lot of testing and evaluation and, and discussion. So that's fun, too. And uh, I just want to thank you for taking your time out of your schedule to come to Detroit and see us after three years. Yeah, thank you, Drew. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, to introduce our new product and to the headfires. Oh, thanks, man. So again, I've missed you. It's great to have you here. Yeah. Everybody, uh, go to CanJam New York if we get this released before CanJam New York uh, to check out the the EF600, the Svanar, and the Audivina. Thanks again, Fong, for coming thank out. Thank you, Drew. Good to see you, thank man. You. Good to see you.